So we have 30 minutes to talk about um, what we're changing with Connection Cedar with regards to the integration of LEAP. We have a few slides, so I'll walk through a quick summary of what the changes are that we're talking about, why we're doing it, and what you will be able to do. And then Andreas will give a demonstration of, I believe, two scenarios on how this would look like and how you set it up and so forth. So I think without further ado, uh, let's just get started. And let's talk about how you can build and integrate Leap apps with HCL Connection CDAR. The important part is the now included exclamation mark part on this slide here. So if you can go to the next slide. Um, we have seen customer presentations in, uh, in Constance when we were all at the uh, Engage event. There was a customer who talked about how they're using Leap apps within their connections environment, right? So technically, not necessarily new. What is new is that with connection CDAR, you now get the limited use license for Leap with every connections license. So if you download and install Connection Cedar, you now have access to Leap and can integrate that within your connections environment. Um, let's go to the next slide. Um, this was just the again agenda, just re reiterating that we'll actually have a demonstration here, which of, of course you're all looking forward to. But here's the main point, right? So Leap is now included with every Connections CEDA purchase. It is a limited use license. What does that mean? That doesn't mean that it can only be used for certain types of applications, polls and surveys, if you have that in mind. No, you can build whatever app uh, you want to build. It could be an HR onboarding app. It could be, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, any sort of thing you could come up with. The limited nature is because it has to be used in conjunction with connections, right? That's something that we, we do a lot. The, the WAS and license is the same. The DB2 license is the same. CCM license used to be the same. So as long as you use Leap, in relation to and to extend connections, you're good. So you might ask, well, isn't polls and surveys something similar? Yes, indeed it is. And that was actually the catalyst to making this all happen. Polls and surveys is a connections app. I don't know if everybody is familiar with it. I know customers are using it. Some of you extensively, others may not use it. But polls and surveys is something that was built uh, on form, IBM Forms Experience Builder. And we can no longer support that old code base. So we were looking at the different options that were available to us. We could just drop it, right? And abandon that feature, but we certainly didn't like that. We did not want to do that to our customers. So what we did was, well, let's give you even more by including Leap which now, like I mentioned earlier, doesn't limit you to polls and surveys anymore. You can build whatever app. Um, but on the next screen, let's talk a little bit about uh, what that means as well, because the experience will be slightly different. If you have used polls and surveys before, its main characteristic was that it was very integrated with the community, meaning that you were able to build a new poll, a new survey, within that community app, right? We did not want to add that overhead of building that dedicated app again. We wanted to keep it flexible so you can use Leap and then build whatever app you want and integrate it into um, connections. So that's different. The second bullet point here that I want to mention is that with connection CDAR as we release tomorrow, you will receive the license entitlement and you can embed a Leap app, for example, in, in a rich content widget or in an, in an iframe widget, et cetera. Uh, with probably CR1, we will also include two widgets that Andreas is, is going to show you what they will look like. So it'll make it easier for community owners to do that step of selecting a Leap app, embedding it in, in your community and so forth. Um, so those are the key differences between the former polls and surveys 
and now the actual leap integration. So next slide. And this right. is where I hand it off to Andreas because Andreas will now actually show us what this will look like. I think this is the second demo of today, the second live demo of today. And uh, I will show you in the next few minutes uh, how it looks like when you um, integrate a leap application in connections. Uh, I have prepared two use cases. The first one is uh, the traditional uh, survey, which you were able to 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 create also in in, in uh, the other releases of of connections, and the second use case is uh, what is possible beyond this uh, pulse and surveys use cases. So um, in this use case, uh, we have a, a showcase community showcase is the, the, the company and the back office department has his, um, its, its community here and they are planning a Christmas party this time face to face because COVID um, allows it. So what they are doing is they need a survey just to uh, find out who will participate on this party and uh, since they will have a party where uh, everyone brings what what he can uh, they uh, will ask uh, what people can bring to the party so what i do is the first step i change to the hcl leap uh, application manager this is the point where you find all your HCL Leap applications or HCL Leap uh, surveys. And I just create here a new application. And uh, the big difference between surveys and the HCL Leap functionality is that you have a lot more options. For instance, you can start with an existing um, application or survey if you have already one and you can modify it to your needs or you can even start with a spreadsheet where the, the structure of your application is already in and you can take this one. And in this case, I start with a blank application, call it Christmas survey. I can uh, choose a theme. And this is basically the design interface for uh, leap applications. And what you see here is um, the, the palette of, of items you can use for your applications here on the, on the left side. You have a lot of properties for all items on your application. And here you have the canvas where you can um, design your application. And you will recognize that you have a lot more options for uh, designing your application and designing the look and feel. So what I will do here is I will make this a little bit smaller and uh, we'll make it with two columns. And the first is that I give this survey a name. So I just pick this text and put it here and say, this is a Christmas party survey. And I can even format it, uh, which with a, let's say, larger heading. And I want this text to be on both columns. So I just pull it here and I make it centered. So this is now the, the title of the survey. And the same, next thing I need is just the name for the participants. So I just put in this single line entry field, put it here on, on the canvas, make it larger and just rename it by clicking on the uh, name. <clears throat> and uh, the width, I make it a full width. And I need two more fields. The first one is 
um, a selection if, if 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 someone will participate on the party or will not. So I choose this select one and just put it here um, at the end of the canvas. Um, call this participation and I can options I will participate and the second option is I cannot participate so and the second thing I need is just what people can bring to the party. So I take this select many here, put it down here, Let's say I can bring the following. And now I can here just say what people can bring, drinks, food, or let's say music. So this is um, all I need for this survey. So uh, the survey is nearly finished. What I now want to do is I want to have some, some logic in here. For instance, I want to make the name field uh, a mandatory field. So I just click here and the participation, there is a small arrow. I want this one also to be mandatory. And I want the second thing I want is that this field will only be shown when someone will participate because it does not make sense to present this question to someone who cannot participate. So I can just add a rule here, which says that this field will only be shown when the participation is, I will participate. So apply and close. And now my um, survey form is ready. I can always have a preview here and this is how this will look like in the end stage. I can add my name here. I can say I will participate and can answer this. And if I cannot participate, I will not be presented with the second question. So my application is ready now. I can save it. And the second thing I have to do now is I have to deploy this application so that it is available for the survey. So I just click on deploy and I have some more options here, uh, which say I can set the period where people are able to use the survey and I can even email notifications to um, the employees uh, which are supposed to, 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 to use this survey. So the survey application is now ready and now I have to integrate it into the connections um, community. And there I have, uh, uh, there will be in CR1, uh, two new widgets which are called leap form, which is for, for displaying a form in on a highlights page and the leap page widget, which is for displaying the data which has been uh, submitted so far from one application. I've already done that and this is how it looks like. So you can here now uh, just use this survey and the, the data and on the right side and this is the configuration of these this uh, widget it's pretty simple you can uh, choose the form from from the um, leap application and just uh, define if it is an authenticated or anonymous uh, survey and this is all you need to enter to make this available here on the highlights page 
And on the right side, you can see the um, survey results. You have different options here. I choose the uh, results just to be displayed who can attend and who will not attend. You can see that as a data table also here. And this is the simple use case for, um, for creating surveys in um, community in, in, in a connections community. The second use case is about real applications. And what I mean with that is that um, uh, this is the second use case where the, um, the HR department uh, has decided to, um, to make a, a, an application available for new hires to, to enter their data for uh, their personal data when, when they started in um, a showcase. And therefore we have here the um, showcase intranet, which is by the way, based on the connections engagement center. And here we have a full business application, which is also built with uh, HCL Deep. And this is an onboarding application which has um, uh, navigation in it and where you can, as an employee, um, enter your personal data, for instance, your all your employee information, personal information, contact information, job information, and so on. And you can also uh, enroll for benefits or, or um, enter the data for the payroll for, for the for your bank account and so on. So this is a, a full blown um, business application, which is also being developed with, with HCL Leap. And I think we can also take a look at this application. And this is, application is a little bit larger and it contains um, uh, not only one form, but uh, one form for, for each of the, the uh, information types. And it also contains app pages, which is the um, navigation for the user. The user will be recognized because he's um, already logged in. And if we take a look here, um, you can, for instance, um, create an, old, an, an own uh, cascading style sheet where you um, use your corporate design um, for this application. And you even can create um, the workflow for this application with uh, a graphical workflow editor. In this application right now, it is uh, implemented in this way that the user can save his information as a draft and or he can submit it and then it will be completed. Um, we can just modify this one. So uh, think of having a review cycle within this application. Um, I can do that quite easily. I can just add another stage. I call this stage review and all documents should be reviewed before they will be get into this complete stage. So um, what I will do is I will delete this first submit action. So the submit always goes through the review and I will add here an action where I can say that from the review stage, the next stage is the complete stage and the draft submit action should also go to the review stage instead of the uh, complete stage. So it is very easy to, to, to um, modify this application and to 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 um, really use uh, workflows here in the application to make it um, valuable. And um, 
because uh, leap is also um, um, based on on rest services so you can use rest services to um, to use other applications but you can also um, use rest services to access the information here in leap applications so that you can uh, define your backend system where you store for instance the personal data of your employees that um, when the form is completed then um, that the the backend system can then transfer this data via rest services to the other system so that was a quick overview of the possibilities you will have with hcl leap so you can uh, still um, use it as as a vehicle to to create uh, your surveys and your polls but i think as you saw right now you have a lot more possibilities to to really uh, create um, business applications with this platform and with the uh, widgets um, integrated into your connections communities or in the connections engagement center and that's it for the demo back to you Rennie. okay so i hope with the demonstration you saw really what we're adding here right so it, it's not just a simple replacement of polls and surveys which were no longer uh really viable for us to maintain but drastic expansion of the abilities and the capabilities that you you get with with the full leap application and, and adding it to connections so just to recap um that license is included with with connection cdar and with probably CR1, we're going to add the two widgets that you saw Andreas show on the highlights page. But even without those two widgets, you can embed Leap Apps in, in a rich text widget or, or in an iframe. So th there is a question and, and two of you asked it whether this entitlement um, is retroactive. And by the book, which is the only answer I can give you, the license will be updated for Connections 8. So if you open the license file for Connections 8, you will see HCL Leap as a supporting program in the Connections CDAR license, right? So that means that with 8, you will get it. Updating old licenses is something that is to be avoided. So technically speaking, by the book, this will be an entitlement that starts with 8. Okay, so there's another question on it, Leap obviously has more capabilities and that brings more options, more buttons, more things to do. So yes, from an end user perspective, it does require a, a slightly more advanced skill set than the former polls and surveys app required, right? That was the one big advantage of polls and surveys. It was embedded in the community and easy to use. So we had to give that up a little bit. Uh, will we make tutorials available and additional user guides? So that's definitely something we're looking into. We haven't produced them yet. So for tomorrow, they're not going to be ready, unfortunately. But that is a good comment. So I'll take that back and see how we can improve, tailor the documentation towards the community use case. I'm not sure how to quite understand that question, whether um, the connections update will influence Leap Apps I'm not, not quite sure, Annette, on how to, how to read your question. Um, but I agree with you that she, Annette mentions that, that Leap has a high potential for a lot of the power users. And that's definitely something you can, you know, broadcast to your organization. The question is, do you announce it to all the users? I think that's what the question is. All the users or just the power users? Depends, right? I, I would not see the Leap UI as something that you could give to every end user right we, we know that end users come in all shapes and sizes and skill levels and uh, not all end users will be able to you know fully leverage the leap ui so maybe targeting power users first to you know get your feet wet 
uh, get things out might be a good idea and then um, lead by example, other users can pick it up. Okay. Uh, thanks, Rene, for answering because the question is just uh, based on the experience we've made with a lot of users. They do a lot if you give them a lot. And um, it's a combination of is there a recommendation or do we need, to, I assume we need to figure it out and we need to decide on our own. The second question was. If, if we offer the Leap apps um, and there occur updates to HCL connections, will it be ensured that Leap apps will work or do we need to ensure that the Leap apps work after an update? Oh, I see, I see, I see. So, um, so you have Leap and connections running sort of independently to each other, but the, the widgets and the iframe and however you integrate it, pull the Leap apps into the community. That makes a connections upgrade uh, pretty much independent from the Leap side, right? So mm -hmm. if you have both running and then you upgrade connections eight from CR5 to CR6 to Spruce, um, that the integration is not at a level where things would break. So you can update connections and your Leap instance might not have been updated or the other way around, um, mm. uh, will not really have an impact. Mm. But we need to, yeah, when when updating, we always need to ensure that uh, everything is working. So we would need right. to have a look at the Leap as anyways. Um, right, T testing is, should always be part of the update procedure, but yeah. I, I don't foresee, 